If I gave you a few numbers, could you calculate the average of those numbers? Um, I actually suspect that most of you could, um, in fact, uh, calculate the average because most people, I think, you know, understand the average. It's a uh, term uh, that we use all the time, right? The average of this, the average of that. Uh, but uh, could you answer this question involving the average? Well, let's go and take a look at the question. It says the average of 2, 5, and x is 40. What is x equal to? Now, because x is what we call a variable, which just basically represents an unknown value, uh, this is basically kind of like an algebra problem because we have a variable. But even if you didn't understand basic algebra, and but uh, you still understood the average, you could still kind of uh, use some common sense and kind of tinker around with this problem to find the answer. Okay, so here is our problem. And as I indicated, anytime you have a math problem and then there's a variable involved, like an X, a Y, a Z, an A, a B, things like that, typically we're talking about an algebra problem. Okay, so that's what algebra is. Uh, algebra uses uh, variables to represent unknown values. So we're going to use algebra to solve this problem, but before we kind of get into that, we need to understand what the average means. Okay, so some of you might be like, yes, I forgot what the average is. No big deal. Let's go and review that right now. All right, so what is the average of these numbers here? So I have 2, 3, and 4. 2, 3, and 4. What is the average? Okay, now, uh, even if you kind of forgot what the average is or how to find it, most of you could still probably uh, kind of just use some common sense in your memory to tell me what the correct uh, answer is. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and take a look at the right answer. The answer is 3. So 3 is the average. Now, you, you can see here I have another word called the mean. And you're like, hey, what is, isn't that the average? Well, uh, oftentimes uh, you'll see the word mean. Mean is also the same thing as an average. Now, this kind of uh, topic is what we call, it's part of something called uh, basic uh, statistics and the measure of central tendency. Okay, so along with uh, the mean, you may uh, be interested in finding the mode. Uh, you have the mean, medi uh, median, that's another big uh, one. Uh, so mean, uh, median, mode, range, all this stuff. We're talking about basic statistics, uh, just for those of you that are like, oh yes, uh, you know, I need to learn more about this. Uh, matter of fact, if you need to learn more about basic statistics and kind of, um, you know, uh, measure or basically data science, if you will. It's not all that scientific and not all that difficult. Check out my um, courses. I'll leave the links to them uh, in the description, my pre-algebra, Algebra, Algebra 1, uh, those courses. You'll see I have full chapters on this stuff and much, much more. Okay, but you should know that this word mean is also the average. All right, so how do we find the average? Well, if you look here, these numbers are, uh, uh, we have three numbers and they're written in kind of uh, lowest to highest. So we're kind of thinking, well, isn't the average kind of the middle number? Well, yes and no. Technically, uh, the median is the middle number, but what we need to do is we have to calculate the average by adding up all the numbers that we have. We have three numbers, one, two, and three. So we're gonna add them up and we're gonna divide, by, we're gonna divide that sum by how many numbers we have. So we have one, two, three numbers. So we're gonna uh, take two plus three plus four, and then we'll divide that by three. And when we do that, we're gonna get two plus three is five, five and four is nine. So nine divided by three is three. Okay, so again, that is the mean, that is the average, and that's how we calculate it. But the average or the mean is only one measure of what we call measure of central tendency. Okay, so uh, for those of you that are like, yes, I want to learn more about this stuff. Well, again, you know, we're talking about basic statistics, but that's for another discussion. All right, so this is how we find the average, right? So if you have a bunch of numbers and you want to find the average, we need to add them up and divide by how many numbers. Okay, if you understand that, then that's all you need to really figure out this problem. Are you struggling in math because of confusing lessons? Maybe the teacher's not showing you all the steps you need or things are happening too fast. Well, there is a better way. So come on over to my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. There you'll find clear step-by-step -step instruction by me that will definitely make a huge difference in your math success. 
So make sure to check out all my courses by following the links in the description. All right, so here is our problem. Now that we have a great understanding of the average, let's just uh, use some common sense here to think about what the answer could be. All right, now we'll get to the actual solution here in a second, but the average of two, five, and x, now x is some number, is 40, okay? So I have two, I have five, and then I have some number here, and I know the average is 40. Now what do you think this number could be, okay? Is it gonna be a, a small number or is it gonna be a large number? And you kind of think about that for a second. You might say, well, let's see here, if I had like a seven, could I have an average, you know, does this make sense? The average of these three numbers would be 40. Eh, it doesn't make sense, right? So is this number going to be larger? Well, maybe if it was 17, well, the average is 40. Well, you know, you want to kind of use some common sense when you look at a problem. It, it's very um, helpful to kind of anticipate what type of answer or what should be a ballpark, you know, um, you know, value for your answer, okay? Oftentimes, you know, I've seen this happen uh, for many, many, many years. Students and very good students will do all this math and da-da-da-da, they'll turn in their answer and it will make no sense, okay? So for example, someone might uh, give me one as the answer here, all right? And I'll be like, okay, here's the answer. I did a bunch of work. And then, you know, if you just stop and think about it, this doesn't make any sense. There's no way we can get uh, the average of uh, two, five, and one to be uh, 40, right? You know, these three numbers, there's no way. So in other words, when you get your final answer, always ask yourself, in this problem and all math problems, you know, does it make sense, okay? So just think about that for a second. What do you expect here uh, X is going to be? Well, it's certainly not going to be a small number, right? It's gotta be a pretty large number. Okay, so with all that being said, let's go ahead and get into the actual mechanics. And if you don't know basic algebra, what you could do here is what? Well, let's just talk about that real, real fast. You could just go, well, let's see here, two, five, and maybe you wanna try like 20. Okay, so you would add these up, divide by three, and see if the average is 40, nope. And then just go ahead and maybe try another uh, value, 50, add them up, divide by three, do you get the average of 40? So you could use a trial and error method, but if you know algebra, this is going to be a very easy problem. And let's go ahead and show you exactly what we need to do. Okay, so we have these numbers, two, five, and x. And if we take the average of these numbers, then how do we take the average of these numbers? Again, we're going to add these numbers up. X is a number. Remember, it's a variable, but it's a number. So x is what we're looking for. So if we take uh, two, five, and that mystery number x, we add these up and divide by how many numbers? Well, one, two, three, okay? The average is 40. Okay, so we're going to use algebra to uh, create an equation, all right? And that's what you want to do is to um, use the information in the problem to uh, create an equation, all right? When you're dealing with algebra, in order to solve for an unknown value, you want to uh, set up an equation. All right, so the next question here uh, really is, can you solve this basic algebraic equation? Let's go and talk about that right now. All right, now the first thing I want to kind of emphasize here is in algebra, in mathematics, when you have a sum or difference, in other words, uh, when you have a bunch of things you're adding up or subtracting, get in the habit of putting parentheses around those sums and differences. That's a great habit. It will uh, really help you out uh, uh, and it will help you um, uh, avoid making a very, very, very common mistakes in mathematics, okay? So if you could just kind of remember that for the long run, you'll thank me uh, later. So anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and first things first is I'm gonna put parentheses around this sum, okay? Now they're not there right here when I wrote this equation, but I want you to get in the habit of putting those in. All right, so now uh, that we have these parentheses, let's take a look at what we are dealing with. So we have, this is a fraction, right? So we have a fraction, this is this whole thing here is the numerator. Three is the denominator. It is a fraction and it's equal to 40. But what I want you to do is to think of this as one fraction being equal to another fraction. So you might be able to say, well, that was 40. 40 isn't a fraction. Well, you can think of anything you want as a fraction. Just put it over one, right? So if here is five. If I want to think of five as a fraction, five over one. Here is X. If I want to think of X as a fraction, just put it over one. Okay. 
All right, so I want you to uh, you know observe here. What we are dealing with is two equal fractions. Okay, so this is a fraction right here, and it's equal to another fraction. Now, this type of situation in mathematics is called a proportion. Okay, now this isn't the only way to kind of approach this, but it's a great kind of review of this concept. Proportions are tremendously important. And if you recognize uh, that you have a proportion, it's very, very easy to solve proportion problems. And let me go ahead and show you why. All right, so again, two equal fractions. Let's take two equal fractions, something like this. I have one half. Well, that's equal to this fraction four over eight, right? Well, when you have two equal fractions, by definition, what we call a proportion, what is true is something called the cross product, okay? In other words, if we cross multiply two times four, this is eight, and that's gonna be equal to eight times one, which is eight, okay? So when you have a proportion, the cross product is always true, okay? So here, uh, although I have all this kind of algebraic stuff here, I can still use the cross product. I have one fraction equal to another fraction to uh, solve this problem, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and do that now. So I'm gonna take one, I wanna multiply it by this sum right here. And so one times two plus five plus X is gonna be two plus five plus X. And then I have three times 40, which of course is 120. All right, so I clear the fractions. Now some of you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, just can't you just clear the fractions by multiplying everything by three? Yes, of course you could do that. Uh, this is also what we call a rational equation. Uh, but, you know, I wanted to bring up uh, proportions because, you know, that's very, very important. And when you see uh, equations that are two equal fractions, you can always use the cross product to solve. All right, so here is our lovely equation. We have 2 plus 5 plus x is equal to 120. So how do we solve this? Well, let's first add 2 and 5. So 2 and 5 is 7. 7 plus x is 120. And to solve for x, all we need to do is subtract 7 from both sides of the equation. And we want to write our work just like this. And then we'll add down in a column manner. So 7 minus uh, 7 is 0. x plus nothing is x. And 120 uh, minus 7 is 113. Okay, so looking at our answer, 113, it makes sense, right? Remember, we uh, anticipated a uh, bigger number than 2 and 5. We, uh, we didn't know which number. But this kind of passes the common sense test. And we're like, all right, this makes sense. But how can we uh, be sure about our answer? Well, you can always check your solution, you know, back into the original problem. Okay, so here is the original problem here. So the average of 2, 5, and x, well, if x is 113, uh, we're going to be saying the average of 2, 5, and 113 is 40. Okay, well, let's go ahead and check that. 2, 5, and 113, we'll find the average of so 2 plus 5 plus 113 divided by 3, right? Well, 2 and 5 and 113 is 120. 120 divided by 3 is indeed 40. Now, um, I'm going to tell you right now, especially for those of you out there that are uh, math students, never, ever, ever, ever turn in your test, quizzes, exams early, okay? Uh, that is like the worst thing you can do. And I used to, you know, get really frustrated with uh, students, especially really strong students. They're like, hey, look at me, uh, Mr. Math teacher. I did my one-hour exam in 15 minutes, and everyone's looking at that person. I'm like, wow, that person's a genius. Well, no, even if they did that right, never do that. Never, ever do that. Now, some of you might say, well, I want to finish so I can move on, you know, check my uh, phone, my text messages, my social media, or maybe my uh, homework. That's the worst thing you can, you can do, okay? Not only in math class, in any situation, you want to use that extra time to look for errors, okay? I make errors in mathematics. You're going to make errors. Even if you don't think you made an error, you need to kind of go back and double check your work, check your solutions. You know, you have to be a little bit, uh, for lack of a better word, paranoid. You have to be like, wow, I think maybe, hopefully I didn't make a mistake. And you'll be surprised that you're going to find these little errors and you can correct these before you turn in your test. So never, ever do that. And uh, again, you know, I'm just sharing all the things that I've seen throughout many decades. And of course, you know, I've made all these errors myself. All right. So with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.